Hello all, I'm Venkat Chapra, plant pathologist at here in Langdon Research Experiment Station. I'm here for the past five years. I work on a lot of diseases, but today a lot of diseases and a lot of crops, but today I will be updating you guys on uh, the research has been done on canola diseases. To list, we have three prominent diseases in North Dakota on canola uh, causing losses. Uh, one, black leg, second, white mold, followed by in a small pa part of the state, we have club root. Even though it is very minor in our area, in, a, in a North Dakota, when you come to our area in Northeast North Dakota, it's a big thing. So I'll be updating uh, the research which we did uh, over the years or last year uh, on all three of these diseases. Coming to black leg, you know, it is caused by a fungus and uh, so it has been a uh, lot of research has been done by the NDSU pathologist over here and we have a lot of uh, information on it. For, for you guys to remember that every year when you choose your variety, pick um, black leg resistant varieties based on the pathogenicity groups you have in your area. Uh, also remember to follow longer crop rotations and rotate the varieties with different pathogenetic groups that are available uh, in canola crop. The second disease which I wanted to focus is white mold. Uh, it is common in our area every year and we have in NDSU uh, very good forecasting system. Follow that, it's a weekly update. Uh, it is published in crop, uh, crop and pest report every week follow the um, guidelines and see whether you are your or your canola crop is susceptible to this disease and don't forget at 20 percent of flowering we need one fungicidal application there are quite a few fungicides available to manage this disease uh, to, to to want if you guys wanted to know we have been producing these annual reports every year you can check what uh, what are the latest chemicals and how they are faring. And also you can check NDSU fungicide guide, field crop fungicide guide for the appropriate chemical and the dosages, etc. And the, in the final and the last disease I'm going to talk about is club root. Club root has been uh, identified in uh, North Dakota in the year 2013. Since then it has been a regular citation in our canola fields over the years. Over the past five years, we have been um, surveying and uh, every year it has been a common occurrence in canola in this part of the North Dakota. Over the, um, out, of, uh, out of all the years we surveyed, 2018 we had a very, very large impact of club root in our area. Uh, out of 100 fields with, uh, we surveyed, 33 fields were infected with club root. So we wanted to take immediate measures and there were a lot of uh, educational programs has been and uh, the, by 2019, we found only four fields in our county out of the 50 fields we, uh, we scouted. Good thing that everybody is uh, opting for a resistant variety, which is um, readily available to our growers, but there are very few varieties available. We don't have an option like uh, what we have in black leg. There are a number of varieties. You can rotate the varieties. Here with club root, we have only very few varieties. The rotation of the varieties may not work, but along with that, you should practice other practices too. If you have club root in your field, follow sanitization of your equipment. Follow longer crop rotations. That is one canola crop in three years. Then use resistant varieties if you have the history of club root in your field. The varieties we have listed in our website and in, in the annual reports which are available to the growers. We are trying to keep track of the pathotypes in our area. 
this is the table you will be finding um, in the reference section where we have very primitive pathotypes which have been observed in our area. So all the resistant varieties which are available can control the pathotypes which are prevalent in our area. We are doing more studies on the pathotype and its prevalence. Hopefully we can get, I can get a very um, uh, valuable data by next year. Uh, keep fingers crossed and good luck for you guys for this cropping season. Thank you for watching. Thank you.